all righty then ladies and gentlemen boys and girls today what we are going to be going over is the best start that i feel like will be well well we're going to be doing guides right where we're going to be going through multiple different situations and multiple different ways that you can start in eu and gain fame gain silver and just <clears throat> end up enjoying the game in general so obviously first things first create your character and you're definitely going to want to play tutorial the reason why you want to play tutorial regardless is because it gives you the three days three premium at the end if you have already brought the crystal founder pack the gold founder pack or any founder pack regardless you'll get premium attached to that regardless but good things that you want to take into consideration when it comes to um starting out inside of this zone is you are going to be able to get ahead well not ahead with gathering but gathering in these starter zones are massive now the reason why gathering in these starter zones are massive are just mainly down to the simple fact that the regeneration rate of the tier two and tier three resources is much higher on the test server than they are in uh, well, not the test server, sorry, in the tutorial island than what they are out in the open world. So if you are looking to try and get ahead, well, I say ahead in gathering, but if you want to, you know, get tier three gathering and possibly tier three refining, if I remember correctly, we'll check it out once we get into the tutorial, like um, our refining stations and stuff, um, whether we can refine tier three and craft tier three gear i would recommend doing so literally straight off the tutorial island um just because like i says uh, the rates in which the uh the rates in which the resources respawn are really high so there's that and then ladies and gentlemen one thing that i would recommend doing is to make sure that you can do crafting in every single tree at least a minimum of tier three to get into tier four crafting I would recommend crafting uh, one plate. So from these, one leather, one plate, and also one cloth. What I did is cloth sandals, leather jacket, plate helmets. And I, I, I crafted quite a few to end up getting to this, this tree here where then we can craft anything in tier three, which is easy peasy. It just makes things so much easier and it's just makes everything so much faster also what i ended up doing is refining everything and using the learning points the five learning points to go from tier three up to tier four on the on the tutorial island to make things well so that way then we can just refine tier four resources as well from the get-go um i'd recommend only getting up your gathering up to tier three on tutor tutorial island because after that once like it just it just takes too long you're just gonna be wasting so much time to end up getting you know you're, you're gathering leveled up to tier four like harvesting tier three resources gives you so much more fame to get up to the tier four and not only that you can also then use the tier three resources to craft shit to build your your crafting stations and stuff on your island this is what we're going to be going over next so now that obviously we've gone to this stage now where, where we're at the distraction, get to the pier, I would recommend going back to the town to pick up two, maybe three mules, just in case the prices are going to be high. I reckon prices in Germany for the mules are going to be pretty cheap because the amount of people that actually transport mules off of the starter island. But just in case you die or whatnot, I'd recommend just picking up two, maybe three mules because they're super cheap on the tutorial island. All right, so now that we've got the three extra mules in case we die, we're not really going to make much profit from these if we want to try and sell them. Um, so your best bet is to just keep them regardless. 180%, so it's going to take a second to end up uh, getting out of here. But regardless, it's just helpful anyway. It's free silver. It's free free mounts. Can't really complain. All righty then. So click complete, accept. Go over to this guy. And that is how you receive your three days premium. Bunk, three days premium. And with three days premium, you do end up getting learning points. Now, because this is the this is the beta before EU releases, the learning points you have a shitloads more. 
tons more. One thing I would recommend only using learning points for. So with learning points, only use them to get to the first tree and like to the first point where you can then start using tier four and above. Don't use learning points afterwards. Only use learning points on gathering. Now, the reason why I say this is because gathering is the thing that takes the most time to level up and it costs the most amount of learning points per tree when trying to get to tier eight. So you are going to need a lot of learning points if you are going to plan on leveling up gathering. So this is the third thing I'd recommend if you are going to do a bit of gathering um, is to make sure that you have a bit of wood planks and a copper bar when you do leave Tutorial Island to be able to craft your first set of tier two gathering tools. Just to start gathering to get your tier three gear. All right, so when you want to try and uh, harvest a certain resource, if you open up your world map and then click on this means that this is a tier three zone. So you click on this and then up in the top right hand corner here, it will show you the kinds of resources, materials that you can find in this zone and at what tier. So at this point, you wanna, with all your tier three uh, refined materials, you wanna figure out what kind of build you are gonna wanna start leveling up and start running. Now, obviously up on the screen, I will end up putting up a few screenshots of different builds that you can try out. Uh, that are actually pretty meta and will help you for a lot of things. Um, if you want to go through daggers, you can go the one hand dagger with the hunter jacket, the mercenary hood and the scholar sandals for energetic sprint. Um, if you want battle axe, battle axe is really, really good for PVE and semi decent for like 1v2, 2v2, etc. Like small scale fights. Um, if you want to run that, go the uh, battle axe with the torch, with the mercenary jacket, mercenary hood once again because it's actually really strong and then you can also go with the scholar sandals. If you want to go for more PvE, I'd recommend going uh, plate boots with reju rejuvenating sprint and then scholar cow for mana regen. Um, there's also bow builds like regular bow with mercenary jacket, mercenary hood, scholar sandals, um, the nature staff build which is the one hand nature with the torch mercenary jacket or soldier soldier armor depending on what you fancy and doing uh mercenary hood and then scholar sandals um obviously you got your fire staffs i really don't like running fire staffs personally but if you want to run fire staffs you can always go great fire which is pretty strong because you got the aoee with the um cleric robe mercenary hood scholar sandals um, but yeah, there's a few of us that I'll end up throwing up like the dual sword ones, um, the dual swords with the mercenary jacket, uh, mercenary helmet, a uh, hood with the scholar sand, well, with sandals in general for energetic sprint. Um, once you actually go into PVP, you'll be changing most of the sandals over to plate boots for rejuvenating sprint. And then your helmet will be like mercenary hood will be like fiend cow once you're able to actually start uh crafting and using fiend cows and possibly helmet of valors um as well as soldier helmets for certain fights and or uh guardian helmets for shieldings from things like curses and stuff but yeah the the, 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 the different variety of the different builds is actually insane and never ending so you decide what you want to actually start leveling and start using out of all of the builds that are thrown up on the uh, video uh, you can obviously take a minute to go back through all of that and check it out and uh, then look to craft your first tier three items on these trees here which will then go into said specific uh trees of uh, weapons and armor all right then one thing that i'd also recommend ladies and gentlemen is make sure that you are able to craft your tier three tools um to get to the next stage and you've got to do that by making sure you have uh tier two wood and metal well planks and metal bars and then obviously you just craft a few of few of them until you hit that tier three threshold and we should be able to actually craft our tier three now with the resources that we have ended up accumulating. Let's have a look. Sweet. 
So then we're going to craft tier three of each and then we're gonna crack on into the black zone later so with your gear obviously you can decide we're gonna move over to the main city now uh if you're gonna if you want to take your resources with you and your gear uh you're gonna have to make the walk from the star island up through the zones up to Martlock, or if you start down in step cross you gotta go through fractured ground up to bridge watch and then limhurst is gonna be over here uh, and it's going to be like over here the starter zone is and you got to go up there Fort Sterling's here you start around here or here I can't remember so then you got to I'm sure it's here and then you got your Thetford which is for fiber which then once again here it is you can see the symbol you go over to Thetford we're going to make our way over to Martlock and we're going to head out into the black zone all right boys we're gonna we're gonna hit up the black zone arena all right guys to end up entering the black zone in every single city you'll see a portal each portal up here will be in a different location and a different color for marlock it's blue for bridge Watch, it is yellow which it will be over here so obviously you got to go up here then for limhurst it's green fort sterling it's white and that's that it's purple so be aware of that to be able to enter the black zone for the first time come over to this portal and enter the gate we'll do that right here so this is what the gate will end up looking like you click on it you click enter and there you go you will be bound to that black zone portal so you cannot change to go to any other black zone portals keep that in mind so one way that you can rebind to a different black zone portal is you end up coming to a different city you go inside of the realm gate and then you go over here and then down here on the bottom left you can click remove binding every seven days you can remove your binding from your last black zone portal and then enter to rebind to a new one Okay, so a few things that you want to pay attention to and make sure you check out before entering the black zone is if you click B and then go across this left hand line, you'll see that there's something called Reva. Now what this does is um, each stage that you get up to will increase your damage and defenses against specific tiered creatures. So at first it's going to feel pretty rough to begin with until we get the higher Reva levels when we're killing certain tiered mobs and then on top of that um whenever you're leaving to go out into the black zone i always recommend people to always 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 click on this blue shrine what this blue shrine does is it makes you invisible and immune to damage so you click this bad boy mount back up and exit out into the black zone in whichever direction you are looking to go now to begin with everybody might be thinking oh tier 5 zone this is great to farm in don't ever farm in a in a zone right beside the portal because there's going to be more traffic and more people looking to spank your ass i'd recommend going two maybe even three zones out um so that way then you are further away from traffic and further away where people are willing to travel so therefore you are more likely to be left alone so as you can see uh one thing i'd recommend doing is killing any glowing mobs the glowing mobs are going to give you the most the thing is to begin with you are going to struggle because like i says hey yo he wants my booty all right this is why you don't try and farm anything in the adjacent zone because there's people just running all over that map so we're just going to go deeper into the black zone. The mobs are going to be tier 6, so that's going to be a bit rough. But we'll just see how it goes. Let's see how, how rough it actually is. Yeah, it's not that bad. And we picked up 9.7k fame and 3,000 silver picked up off the ground. Now take this into consideration. Uh, right now on the beta... Fame is increased by 100%, so we'd only get about 5k, 4k, 4.5k, 5k. And silver is being increased by 200% from mobs. So take that into consideration. Technically, I'd only get 1k silver. But 1k silver for a tier 6 mob in the open world is not even that bad, bit bad. Think about it this way as well, right? Is that these 
aren't even buffed mobs. These are just any normal typical mobs. So what we are going to be wanting to find are glowing mobs. Because glowing mobs are buffed mobs that haven't been killed over a certain period of time that are going to give us more silver and more fame for killing them. Um, for like downtime wise, it will be better to just kill every mob that you just run past because, you know, the more downtime you have, the longer it will take for you to gain silver, fame, and all that other jazz. Oh, there ain't no... Right, now this is going to be... There's no way we kill this. It's a... Well, it's only tier 5. So that's not bad. One thing to make sure whenever you're killing mobs is you see these red circles. It is always... Prioritize dodging them abilities because they will destroy you. Let's see how much fame we get. 300k fame chat and 100k silver. Just think about that for a second. You find one tier 5, that's tier 5 spiky mob in the open world. Obviously, the fame is buffed by 100%, so that's still 150k. That's still 150k fame chat. And um, that's only about 35k silver. But think about that. 35k silver for what? For nothing, literally. And then kill this mob here. One thing I'd always recommend as well, chat, is always keep your mount next to you. If you don't keep your mount next to you, you're done skid. You're dead. You're dead arena. And a bing bang bong, ladies and gentlemen. We have already ascended into being able to literally wear tier 4 everything at this point. So we're being chilling. We've already made 130k in, in less than 5 minutes. It's just crazy. Now this is obviously one... Uh, now this is only tier 5 mobs. With that, we've already got... We can easily kill tier 6 mobs with no problems. And then the next step is going Grandmaster Reaver. The spike bus is still there. How oh, fucking yes. Sheesh. How much this time? 450k fucking fame and 145k silver. And just think about this chat. We are in tier 3 gear still. So just keep this in mind, right? That... Black zone killing mobs is insane right now. Like, yes, I know that there's the bonus, but even without the bonus, that's still 225k fame and like 50k silver. That's still massive. I don't know if I can kill a tier 7. I think this is just going to take a minute. Ooh! Look at that, 4.1. Absolutely demolishing this little noob. What a noob, guys. What a noob. 575k fame. 176k silver. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. If you guys really enjoyed it, hit that follow button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave a comment down below of what you thought and things that you want to see. Um, come watch me on Twitch. I'm pretty much going to be live almost every single day. When the release of the server happens, I'm going to be doing a 24-minute 24 hour stream minimum we're gonna push a subathon and see how that goes and we are going to be pushing more youtube videos out over the next few days of fresh starts different things that you can do with tier 3 gear uh the difference in how much xp and silver you can gain from roads the difference from solo dungeons the difference from mists and we're going to show different videos uh even faction warfare and explaining things about the bandit event and we're just going to go over all the different things as a new player that you can check out and that you can do as a new player in albion online appreciate every single one of you guys stopping by with the video hope you have a beautiful day evening night wherever you guys are from peace out